Welcome to the Business and Brews podcast, where our mission is to highlight local businesses in the Triangle area and shed light on different industries. Ready? Ready in three, two. And welcome back to the Business and Brews show. I'm Gavin Vincent. And my name is Ryan Smeltz. And ladies and gentlemen, I am honored tonight, I believe, who is our first uh, veteran business owner, Mauricio, if you would, tell us who you are and what you do, sir. Um, absolutely. Um, so my name is Mauricio. Um, I own MC's Row Detailing. We're a veteran-owned detailing business. So uh, what we do is we get a regular-looking car and make it showroom ready, regardless <laughs> if it's your daily driver or if it really is a showroom car. Uh, so we basically, you know, we take odors out, do paint correction, ceramic coatings, uh, shampoo seats, carpets. Um, let me see what else. We bring the leather back to life. Uh, so you get uh, tan leathers that turn you, slowly but surely. It starts turning darker and darker. You never realize it. Mm-hmm. And then we come along. We clean half of it, and then lo and behold, it's actually white again. <laughs> so <laughs> you know it, it, it changes ridiculously the the shades. But that's what we do. Um, we employ veterans. Um, that's uh, one of our biggest uh, things. We like to employ veterans because uh, coming out of the military, I'm sure you know, it's hard to adjust yourself from something that you're always hands-on in to sitting at a desk or mm-hmm. something calm. Um, and a lot of people, honestly, they kind of lose their mind doing that. I know I, I, I did that for a little bit. And um, what our biggest focus is to employ veterans, try to keep them from you know, going to get jobs where they're, again, put in danger or in a situation where this is all they know, just risking their lives. And, you know, instead of giving them something like a polisher or getting in a car where they can do something with their hands and imme- and see and get that satisfaction of seeing the change immediately rather than long term, sat- you know, gratification. It's mm-hmm. short term. It's quick. And um, uh, honestly, it's, it's something that a lot of people love to do because you see the difference from getting this car like it was and then seeing the smile when somebody's like wow that's my car yeah you know, so that's that, awesome that's yeah. a, that's that's what we love to do that's awesome well Mauricio thank you for being here man we definitely do appreciate you for coming out absolutely appreciate it yeah, yeah. so um I, I think before we we jump jump into our weekly updates uh I said this last week but you guys noticed the uh Trek CBD sign again <clears throat> so Nick and Scott have very graciously opened their doors um and this is, like I said last week, going to be a regular thing. So uh, they're in Wake Forest, uh, right across from what? Sonic. Right across from Sonic. You got yeah, like you don't know where Sonic is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I come up here and I'm beelining for the store. But yeah, then, uh, right off Main Street. So, of course, their website is in the description of this video. Uh, they do online stuff. They're across from the police station as well. Did you? Right next to it. Right next to I it. I didn't yeah. miss that. Yeah, you didn't miss that? Okay. I didn't definitely miss all that part. But yeah, <laughs> come check them out. Uh, Nick has actually recently helped my mom with uh, some of her CBD needs and uh, and pain management. And so uh, they're, they're good guys and they know what they're talking about. So I'm pretty happy about that. And if you know someone that is in need of something like that, then come check them out. They're very friendly. They're very knowledgeable. And they can definitely just walk you through kind of the steps so all the way from knowing absolutely nothing to to being able to pick out exactly what you need uh to take care of whatever it is so yeah yeah thanks nick and scott for that i mean just to echo on that i mean there's a great location and you know we've actually been able to see them actually interact with the customer too and it's amazing the amount of education that you get to the customers and how comfortable you actually feel here nothing's behind any glasses or behind a case or something like that everything's out in the open these guys are well educated and ready to help you guys out with need. So please stop by if you're in the area. Definitely. So Fourth of July. Huh? <laughs> if you guys didn't notice, Ryan's wearing his Fourth of July hat. I like it. This is my uh, vetted VA hat. So <laughs> a, a Marine buddy of mine runs an organization that is a bunch of uh, mortgage brokers and lenders who are vetted. And so uh, he had another buddy make the hats, and I fulfilled them. And so I bought one because I thought I needed it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I, that this was, was pretty, the I most think. popular one, so as I'm like boxing them up, and I'm like, dang, we had ten of these, and now we got, you know, two left. This one's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm keeping this one. 
And I was like, I didn't want to run out. But yeah, I went up to my brother's and we set off my fireworks that we got when we got the puppy. Oh, yeah. Puppy How'd the puppy like that anyway? Uh, well, he stayed home. Oh, okay. I was thought you meant you took the puppy with no, you. But yeah, okay. No. <laughs> but uh, he had his first vet appointment today, so he hates us. Oh, good. good. Yeah, but we got him a couple toys for us. So. I'm sure your wallet hates you, too. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's like 20 bucks, so oh, okay. it's, it's a dog, bad. you know. Yeah, no, it's not that bad. It's not, it's not bad what, at all. what about you, Gavin? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. We had a pretty good Fourth of July. Uh, you know, we uh, did some fireworks at the house like everybody else since there's no large display. So. Nice. Uh, but it was good. Just grown out and just hung out with the family, you know, just like just like normal. So it's good. How about yours, Mauricio? Was it pretty good on Fourth of July? It was. Um, we, we went kayaking for a good amount of the day, morning. Nice. And then, uh, uh, slept in the afternoon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Uh, yeah. Um, went for some pizza, came back inside and heard the fireworks out in the distance, but we didn't go outside. Yeah. <laughs> we were, honestly, we just stayed inside watching movies all day. Yeah. So it, was, it wasn't too bad. My kind of 4th of July. Yeah. And, not, nice and quiet. And before so. before this opportunity slips away, I definitely want to thank you both for your service. Uh, I think you're right. This is the first veteran we've had on, so we definitely do appreciate you both for for your service. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> There's a smile under that beard. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, so Gavin, um, I, I think you're the one that picked out the beer this time. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we drinking on here? Uh, looks like we have uh, out of you have High Wire, uh, which is the High Wire Brewing, and we're actually drinking their High Pitch Mosaic IPA. So. In another uh, North Carolina brewery, so it's actually pretty good. Uh, we'll get a little cheers to a good show there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cheers up. Reach, cheers. reach up. There we go. <laughs> well, good show. So, you ready to dive into it? or? Yes, sir. You want to you go ahead and kick it off? Yeah, so uh, maybe we'll start this one a little bit different than we normally do. I like that. Um, so, <laughs> I, I, like I know that. this isn't related to your business, but take us back to your enlistment. You know, what made you want to join? You know, what what was it like? Um, so, uh, I always knew I wanted to be in the military. Uh, my dad was in the military. Uncles were in the military. Grandpa was an old sheriff in a small town back in El Salvador. Uh, my mom was, she started the police academy. Then somehow my grandma made, forced her to quit because she's an only child. Um, but my, even my mom always wanted to do uh, law enforcement. Um, so it was something I feel was genetically already ingrained in me um, and seeing all the movies hearing the stories that my pops and um, his and like my uncles would tell me it always made me want to want to do it um, I didn't know exactly what branch uh, to be honest with you I didn't know the specific branch I just knew military um, and then towards the end of high school I got shanghaied uh, by the Marine Corps it was gr great time um, I definitely don't regret it there was, it was interesting. I was honestly, um, I was never in one place uh, for too long. Uh, I was technically stationed um, over uh, at the air base um, here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Oh. Uh, but I was always back and forth between uh, 29 Palms, Arizona and Yuma, Arizona. Um, I, was, I, I was abroad a little bit in, uh, in Spain um, and a, a couple places around, but it's, I was always moving. Uh, I always volunteered to go on other training ops um, so I spent most of my enlistment in the in the sand, um, and it was fun. I, I never I never hated sand so much, but at the same time, I, <laughs> I, at the same time I loved it, um, just because it was always something different. Um, we actually got to do a lot of cool things that uh, you know normal people would never get to do, um, and a lot of different trainings, um, and saw a lot of training failures that you would not expect that almost killed us somewhere along the way, but it was awesome. <laughs> um, so it's definitely an experience um, that I'll never forget, but she, I mean, I, I know you know, you know, it's, you might have hated the, the, the moment, the situation, but being with your brothers out there, it was, it's the only thing you could ask for, honestly. It's, it, there's nothing like it. Um, not out here and, or anywhere else. It's those people you build a bond with and being able to just uh, live in, you know, the suck. Um, yeah. it, it was beautiful. Um, and it's definitely, you know, you create friendships that you continue to this day. I still talk to my guys 
um, every week, uh, you know, on a, almost on a daily basis, I, I contact one of them or we're in a group chat together and we just talk about the most <laughs> random things like, hey, you remember when this happened? And they're like, no, I don't want to remember. Stop talking about that. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 a, uh, it's, so, it's an experience I would have never traded. Um, once I got out of the military, um, I actually went and worked in Gitmo for a little bit. Um, which was a fun experience until it wasn't because you're stuck on this little, tiny little base um, where you really have nothing to do. Uh, you can go to one of basically four places, the bowling alley, Tiki Bar, the Irish Pub, or like the, the Rocky Beach, basically, that, that's, and that's it. There's really nothing to do. Um, and, but it was, again, it's a fun experience. You're there with a lot of military members. There's a lot of uh, Navy and Army there. Um, there's, a, there's Marines there. So that was interesting, but once once you're out, it's kind of different. The dynamic, you know, it's mm. it, you you still belong, but it's kind of different. Um, yeah. So you can't just throw yourself in the mix and be like, "Hey, I'm home," you know. So, but it was uh, it, it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, I, I mean, I love it. I I encourage it to anyone who, especially if people don't know what they want to do yet, yeah. it's something that I encourage um, because it gives you a sense of direction while you're in there. Yeah. You figure out what you want to do, or at least give you a little bit of buffer time. Yeah. Um, and it just builds uh, confidence, discipline, um, and just a sense of like uh, self worth while you're in there. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. But I can't let this opportunity slip away either. Uh, Ryan, I've never asked you that question. What, <laughs> what, what, what did you decide to listen to Army? You're like, what, uh, what, what was your turning point? Um, I was trying to get to college and I got lost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you took the wrong turn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I graduated when I was 17. Because uh -huh. um, when my birthday is, and I was homeschooled till ninth grade, and they took me thinking there was going to be a placement test, but there wasn't. <laughs> so I just ended up in the ninth grade. So I was just a hair early. So I graduated Sorry. at seventeen, like two, like three, three months, two or three months before I turned eighteen. Uh, I went to work a job, came back, enrolled in community college, went for a year, found out they wanted me to pay for it. <laughs> uh, my brother-in-law, my now brother-in-law, who was uh, dating my sister at the time, was in and on convalescent leave from training, from basic training. Apparently had a new drill sergeant, because they don't normally do this, but I guess she sent him home with, like, civilian clothes and uniforms. Because I guess she didn't know, well, maybe you'll need uniforms. What he ended up doing, and you and I both know that this is kind of silly but because when you enlist you could get the option to get an extra week or two at home in exchange for working with the recruiters so they kind of have like an apprentice well he's on convalescent leave and he's putting his uniform coming in so they were basically getting free help out of him and he was like hey i'm down here at the recruiting station why don't you come down and check it out i'm like all right i had actually thought about it i talked to a marine recruiter he came over to the house you know, when I was like 16, I was in Police Explorers, I'm an Eagle Scout, you know, so it was all military up until I was about 16, maybe. And then I was like, oh, I kind of like what I'm doing at school, I'm going to go to college, whatever. And uh, I went to talk to him, recruiter was an MP, I wanted to be an MP, asked a couple of questions, but I was like, sure. I think the number one thing was not knowing, like my mom's grant my mom's father uh, retired Navy as an E9, but he passed away when I was like five, so I didn't get to ask him questions like, right. what's, so I didn't really know anyone else. Yeah. So I was like, wow. do, you, do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. That's awesome. <laughs> Where do I sign? Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So That's yeah. Awesome. This feels a little bit like a first date, man. I'm sitting getting to know a little bit about you, Ryan. I like it. I like it. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'll let you know. Okay, good. good. We'll get a couple more beers in here. We'll find out. All right. So, what's Sorry. Sorry, I, I guess we'll go ahead and jump into the interview now. That's enough jacking around. Right? I, I, want to know, I want to know what made you decide on detailing cars. So, that actually started... The little egg was hatched a couple years, like year, while I was still in the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, I had, I was that guy. So I wasn't that guy who immediately got a car into the military. I, I actually waited for, I think, about two years 
but then I was that guy who got the Mustang. Oh. Um, so I had a 2014 Mustang, uh, blood red. I loved it. Um, and I always wanted to, you know, I spent more than a dollar on it, so I wanted to make it look nice. I always paid for, you know, um, to, well, at first I started paying to clean it, but it, they don't clean it how I wanted it. So I started doing it myself. I started, um, my dad had taught me how to buff a little bit, so I, you know, started buffing. I went and got this big old freaking um, buffer yeah. from Lowe's or Home Depot, and I, honestly, I, I don't, I'm, it's a miracle how I didn't mess that paint up. Uh, but you know, started started cleaning it, started uh, making it look real nice. Me and my, and then a buddy of mine, um, this guy named, uh, well, we named him Blue. So Blueberry, me and Blue uh, would detail our cars outside of his apart, outside of his uh, his apartment, and it got to the point where we would detail it so much, detail both our cars so much that one of his neighbors was like, "Hey, why don't you do my car?" You know, as a joking matter. Then the next week, she actually paid us to do her car. And so me and him, I kind of, well, he, he's the one that kind of threw it out there. He's like, why not start a detailing company? I'm like, you know what? That, that could be a thing. And uh, I already come back from, besides military background, um, it, they're, my parents and my family, they're big into entrepreneurship, small mm -hmm. businesses, everything. From trucking company, hot, um, hotels, restaurants, everything. And so I, w I had a notebook where I would write down ideas of, what I could do in the future, um, if I were to ever make it out of the Marine Corps, what I could do. Um, and so I went ahead, put that night, I put detailing into the notebook. Did about, you know, a couple months worth of research, figuring out the what products there were, technology, you know, machines, uh, techniques, everything. And I wrote it down all in this notebook. And it just sat there uh, until 2018 when I got tired of being overseas and I was like, I need, I, I wanna figure out something to do here at home and that's where I, I reached into where I knew that two, two, three notebooks that I had just ideas in were in. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I went through them and one of the first ones that popped up and the only one that I really felt that I could put 100% into was detailing. And I was like, all right, so okay. we'll start okay, there. So, so that's, that's, that's where we started and uh, yeah, that's where we're going. That's where we're at now. Yeah. So. That's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, one question we're starting to ask now because uh, if you're watching this show in the future, um, we're actually filming this <laughs> in the future, right? I like it. I dig it. Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Anyway. Wait, <laughs> <I did. laughs> the, the, wait, the millennials won't get that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, that's another whole thing. Anyway, so <laughs> right now we're like in the midst of, or kind of midway through the whole COVID uh, thing right now. So this is one that we're actually starting, a question we're starting to implement into the show, being that it's 2020 and it's right after July 4th, and you know, we're right here in the midst of COVID-19. So if you're watching this way in the future after it's passed, just bear with us as we get to these questions. <laughs> <laughs> how, has, uh, how has COVID affected your business? So it's, at the beginning of the year, we're on a great, we had great momentum. Mm -hmm. we we're, were off the beginning of the year. We had projections numbers that we wanted to do on a monthly basis, quarterly basis. And we were honestly, we we're hitting, hitting sky high on those. Mm -hmm. Then we started planning for the move. Uh, so we actually moved locations from one side of the triangle to the other. And the week that we signed for the new building, quarantine happened. Oh my God. <laughs> so we are, our grand opening is Technically, well, if you're in the future, it might have happened already, but now, currently, <laughs> right now, it's still on hold. Um, so, you know, and this was in March, mm -hmm. where and we were going to have our grand opening in the the end or begin the end of April or beginning of May, and now it's July, and we still aren't able to because of the restrictions on how many people in a place and everything. Um, so we were off to a great start, and then quarantine happened. Mm -hmm. So COVID COVID hit. And everyone started taking a lot more precaution. People wanted to, um, we have, we started advertising uh, ozone sanitation mm -hmm. for vehicles, um, which was a huge success. People wanted it, which we had already started offering it, but we never really offered it as a sanitation service. What we used the ozone machine was for, was for odor removal mm -hmm. because it does both. Cigarettes. And so, exactly. Yeah. So people who smoke, people who, we had a, a, a doctor call us that, um, their ki or they had dropped some milk in the car and you know that, that smell gets everywhere. You had um, moms with minivans, which are shout out to all the moms with minivans that call us because <laughs> um, they have spills and kids and throw ups, dogs, 
And that, that service actually eliminates all the odors. So um, it, w it was a success at the beginning of COVID and then quarantine happened. So our biggest accounts, like corporate accounts where we would go to actual corporate buildings and do all their employees in you know, two, three days uh, time frame, they all got either sent home or laid off. Mm -hmm. So at this point, the people who are getting sent home um, are more focused on not getting laid off to mm -hmm. call us and, you know, or, you know, ask for services oh. around. Um, so, and then the people that are getting laid off, obviously they don't, their, you know, pennies are tight. So that, you know, it's, it's difficult to call um, what, you know, someone like us who people would uh, refer to us as more of a, um, more of a leisure service mm -hmm. than, you know, a need. Um, but it's it definitely it definitely stumped us for about a month and a half um, until everybody started kind of just being okay with all right. Well, we started implementing uh, contactless um, services. So you know we would uh, FaceTime. They would they would show us exactly what needed. Send us pictures or FaceTime. Um, they would leave their keys in the car mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't have to make do that face to face anymore. I'd send right. them invoices instead of handing them the iPad for them to sign or to pay, uh, collect payment. Just send them the invoice. They'll do it from home, from their room, or their office. So it, it definitely hit. It, it definitely stopped us for a little bit. And like I said, even now we still haven't been able to do our grand opening. Uh, but wow. you know, once we're finally able to do it, then it'll be you know where we'll we'll be able to do some uh, the car shows that we want and everything like that. Right. I like it. Uh, yeah, I think that's really important. What you talked about with the contact list. That's like a, a pivot. You know, even with the ozone machine and the sanitation, even though it does both, you kind of shifted the perspective of the service to cater to your market. And the reason I say that's important is because I've talked to tons of business owners that completely ignore that. And it's like, if a customer is coming to you and wants or needs something specific and you refuse to provide that, it could potentially cost you business. Mm -hmm. And in these times, like that's just not something some people can afford to do. Right. So I love the fact that you know your market was basically saying, "Hey, this is what we're looking for," and you were like, "No problem, I can provide that." Well, but I, th I think that's just uh, a key trait of a successful entrepreneur. I mean, you know, it's not that business goes on and you know something happens and you just hang up, hang it up, and like, okay, well, back to you know watching TV and right. hope this thing <laughs> blows over. No, you you figure it out, you adapt, and you come up with a game plan to actually overcome it. So. I mean, that's, that's definitely a great job and quick thinking on your feet. So Mauricio, I think you kind of already answered the, uh, the pivot question. I, I really appreciate that. I like what you're doing there. I feel like I'm throwing people off with the whole future thing. Like it, I think we... Not, not in the future you won't. Okay, good. Just making sure. <laughs> uh, they'll understand. <laughs> they'll understand. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you know some other people in car wash or car detailing businesses as well as other business owners and entrepreneurs. So what are some things that you've seen other business owners and entrepreneurs do that have made them, help make them successful during these times? So definitely the ozone is something that across the board detailers, um, car wash is not so much because it's more about expedient mm -hmm. uh, service. Um, you know, you, it's in and out. Yeah. Um, versus detailers, you could take your time a little bit more. Um, uh, some of the big things that they have incorporated is one, the ozone machine. Um, and two, which is something that we weren't able to incorporate immediately because of that trend, the, the quarantine and the, um, and the transition from locations was a lot of their, uh, since a lot of them are already well known and established in that specific location, their clients are more keen to dropping off their vehicles, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, contactless drop offs. Right. So they'll go, now we provide pickup and deliveries, um, you know, contact pick up and deliveries, but if but once you people know where you are and they've known that you were there for you know a long time it's a little bit easier for people to say all right we're, i'm just gonna go drop my car off the average american has about two cars in a household mm -hmm. so it's easy for one of them to go drop one off go home and then switch around you know so it's that is something that i've seen a lot of detailers do um that is it's working across the board um that's good uh, so that's a great point. So if you had to, like, if you would have known about this beforehand, what would you have done differently? Like, if you, like, let's say it's January and your crystal ball is telling you, hey, COVID's about to hit, man, you make some changes. <laughs> what would you have done differently? Uh, so one of the biggest things, because um, 
although we we knew about COVID, we didn't actually yeah. calculate for the quarantining part mm. yeah. to take so long. Mm-hmm. We would have definitely focused on a lot because we were there were so many moving parts at the beginning of the year, and we were just so focused on you know getting to our numbers and everything. Mm-hmm. We we didn't focus as much on the advertisement of the move. Mm. And that I feel definitely mm. hurt us, um, at, you know, at, on this end. So one of the biggest things would have been the advertisement, telling people, letting them know, hey, we're moving from here all the way over there. So start getting familiar with this area because that's where we'll be. Right. Um, so that is a huge thing because at our old shop, people would come in every day, like, hey, I need this, hey, I need that. Now we work by appointment, basically by appointment only, but people would still come in. We'd be able to, you know, um, see what they needed and get them on the schedule. Whereas now it's like, I thought you guys, well, I still get calls. I thought you guys were still over here. Yeah. So that's definitely something that I wish we would have um, calculated for and changed. That's awesome, man. Uh, so I was just looking at this and you kind of kind of already covered these two, um, how you got started and what gave you the idea. So I am curious, this is a little bit off the beaten path and get a little specific here, but uh, my brother owns a plumbing company, and I've had to hire and fire people periodically for my company. So uh, I'm curious uh, kind of what that looks like for you. I know you said you hire veterans. So is that like veterans exclusively, and what does the hiring process look like? And how do you set you and your, your team up for success for the retention process as opposed to having to cycle through you know, a large attrition rate? Right. Um, so the it's not veterans exclusive um you know we we try to give veterans you know the biggest opportunity because um they're the ones who i feel um i mean we we know this and a lot of some people don't but uh when it comes to veterans there's a huge um suicide rate honestly because people don't know what to, to do with themselves so that's the biggest reason why we offer it why we cater a lot to veterans um but uh anyone is welcome to apply um, you know, you they send in their resume. I just had uh, another person call this week uh, to try to apply. We just send them the uh, the email. They send in their resume, and then we they, we bring them on board for about a week um, of the training process. So we show them what it is to work at the shop and work on the mobile side. So because we are mobile as well, so they go on routes. They go and um, see how the team interacts with clients or technically now how they don't interact with clients um, <laughs> but, Given circumstances now, yeah, right? so, but before you know they would they would be hands-on and be able to see like okay you know if you ask me a specific question how you, we would answer it we would show you the before and afters of that same solution you know that same problem that we solved a while back and so that you can actually see the a visual representation of what we do mm-hmm. um, you know now they'll go on the route they'll take you know they'll look at the cars they'll They'll, they have to understand the timing that it takes for each vehicle, depending on that specific need, because there is a uh, like a, a set time frame that you want to stay within, um, which we give ourselves a, cu- a, cu- a good amount of cushion mm-hmm. between appointments, but you still want to understand the time, um, the amount of work you really need to do mm-hmm. um, before it's really, um, before it's wasting time, because sometimes if you're taking out a stain, the fabric's just stained. Right. There's nothing more coming out of the actual cushion in it. It's just stained. Now you can't do anything about it. But people will sit there until the you know they'll they'll bleach it mm-hmm. because they they think it, it, they need to go through it. Um, so the hiring process, like trying um, the retention side of things, just like anyone else, we you know the biggest struggle in a business is finding people who have that same dedication, that same passion as mm-hmm. you do, um, and as a business owner. No one will ever have that, that same passion that you right. do. Because, um, you know, in my case, or and in Carlos's case, we dropped everything that he, he was actually working for the education system at the time. When I called him, I was like, hey, I, I want to start a company. Are you in? Are you out? Um, I want you to drop everything and come with me. And he took, the, he took that risk. He's like, he's like well, hold on. He's like, hold on, hold on, what is it? And, I, you know, I gave him the proposal. I showed him everything, the outline. He's like, all right, let's do it. And within two months of that conversation, I was back in the States and we were going gunning. So we were just going at it. Um, but trying to find someone um, who has that same dedication and is willing to give 110% of yourself every day to do it, uh, mm-hmm. that's the hard part. Yeah. Um, and even veterans who, you know, that's, that mentality is ingrained in you in the military. 
when you come out, you want a little more relaxed. You want, you, you know, you don't want to do too much. Yeah. Um, and our job isn't the hardest in the world, honestly, but it does require that attention to detail. Yeah. So you always have to be on top of your game. Um, so, you know, we give people um, a shot like, hey, come for a week, figure everything out. And, uh, and it, it really, after that week, people know whether it's for them or not. Yeah. Um, and the people that stay, they, they've stayed for, you know, for a good amount of time. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, we had to do into our numbers a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, especially during that month and a half that it hit. Mm -hmm. But now that we're back on on the upswing of things, we're being able yeah. to bring those people back. And you know, actually, we ha we just hired a new person, mm -hmm. um, and so be able to bring him in. Uh, but it's like I said, it's that attention to detail and that drive that you try to find that is so hard. But it is a, a, it's possible to find it. Um, yeah. It's just um, you know looking out there, finding yeah. the right people. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a challenge with any business owner. I mean, it's finding the right the right person to fill that seat. I mm -hmm. mean, finding the right person and putting them in the right seat. So, yeah, I mean, definitely, that's good, definitely, that you employ veterans, though. That, that is awesome. Um, just out of curiosity, what is your favorite job that you've done? Like, what was the favorite car that you've detailed so far? Favorite car that I've detailed? I know that's a little tough one, because I never know it's been a lot, so. <laughs> favorite car. All right. Um... <clears throat> Favorite car that I've detailed, and it's and it's it's not a crazy high end car, but I'll, but I'll tell you why it's my favorite. It is it, we we just did it too. It was a black, it's a 2020 black GMC Sierra Denali. Really? And one, I love that car. That uh -huh. uh, if I if I get a truck, which I have yet to get my own truck, we have the company truck, but yeah. it's not <laughs> mine. Just, um, if I get you know a personal truck. It'll probably be that one, just not black. It'll be yeah. white. Yeah, I was about but, to ask you about that. I was like, would a detail so, ever buy a black car? So, <laughs> it, it is, That's you know, no. people, no. It, it is a definite <laughs> no. Um, I know of one detail, actually one we we, um, we work with in the area. He you has a about black um, Hellcat. <laughs> And I'm gonna show him this video, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, that was me." <laughs> um, and that, but it's just the fact that black vehicles are so hard to keep perfect. Yeah. Like even, it could sit in the garage, and the moment you go to quick detail it before mm -hmm. a show, scratch, yeah. scratch. And yeah. so on the way to the show, bucket scratch everything. <laughs> and so, but the reason why that car was pro is probably my favorite is because it came looking. It, it was it was just done for. Like mm -hmm. anyone would look at it and be like, no, no. absolutely not. <laughs> like that is way too. It's gonna take way too long to do, and it's gonna be a headache. And you know, it came back because this is one of those cars where the client had already touched, had already taken a machine, a buffer to the paint itself. Uh -huh. And so it's like, okay, uh -huh. so now, you know, it's, it's it was one of those scenarios where a lot of people come to us, we give them a price, and they're like, okay, well, this guy does it cheaper. They go over there, and they come back about a week later, hey, yeah. they messed it up, can you fix it? <laughs> and you're like, fix it, they did, uh, try to fix it. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's only so much clear coat and so much paint correction you can do. So yeah. at this point, you're like, do I say yes and risk it? Uh-huh. And then surprise myself, surprise them, and you know, retain the <laughs> client. Or do I say no because I don't want to risk that? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, in this case, we took it on, and that car, the difference between when it came in mm -hmm. to going out was it's, it was honestly it was unfathomable. Like you would look at it, and it was just gray streaks everywhere, um, <laughs> and it looked like a cloud. <laughs> and when we were done with it, it was a perfect finish mirror. Like wow. you, you could see everything, and that you know that's probably been one of my favorite cars just because of the the difference. Um, yeah, the before it, and after. It, yeah, the before and after yeah. is definitely one of the, one of the nicest, one of the biggest differences. Um, but overall, I think favorite vehicle or favorite type uh, of thing to do is when we do like small planes. Oh I think yeah, that's those cool. honestly are a little bit more. Uh, they're they're fun because you do them outside. Uh -huh. um, you got the wind coming in, um, and just seeing the shine off of those is honestly yeah. really nice. Um, and it's cool because you know I want to I want to have my plane one day, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm able to familiarize myself <laughs> with the space. I'm like, okay, you no, know, this is this, this is that. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. That I vis love it. The visual visualization is important. Man. Oh yeah. So talking a little bit about that, you know, so you have the big old private plane. 
what else is in your future? Like, what is the what does the business look like long term? So long term is to be able to reach, um, you know, establish ourselves on the East Coast first, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost. You know, Carolinas, Florida, um, and you know where where there's a lot of sun, uh, a lot of nice cars. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely solidify our position on the on the East Coast before going back. So I'm originally from California. Eventually, I want to finish. You know, I want to end up in California as well with you know with the company uh, to have a, a section out there. Um, and that our long-term goal is to be even if we're we're not the biggest, to be known as the best. Right. Because um, you know, with that, with when it comes in our industry, things are changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to courses, um, workshops, events that you know these people that have been doing it for twenty plus years are there. Um, so we're taking, we're trying to grab all their knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, keep, you know, and, and, and harness it and be able to have, have that knowledge, be able to do the same type of work. And if not better than what they're doing. Um, and so eventually our long-term goal is to really have that big, you know, that presence in both the East and the West, but as far and to be able to honestly impact, um, you know, the veteran community in a larger scale on a larger scale so be able to do a lot more events for vets um, be able to help a lot more people um, whether that's vets or just regular pe you know civilians be able to help um, everyone and be able to create those opportunities for people to come in you know be able to provide some scholarships internships all that kind of thing um, awesome. so that's our that's our you know long-term goal I like it, man. Be able, have, awesome. be able to have MC's Royal D-Tank on a private plane headed yeah, all the way to California. Yeah, I, can, I can see the logo now, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be the cleanest plane in the hangar. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's stepping out. Missed the spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Mauricio, I, I know we talked about this a little bit, but um, basically with everything going on now, you know, where you want to get long term, uh, what are what are some challenges you're facing, and and what are you doing to work to overcome those? So um, definitely, as of right now, because of the current situation, um, the being able to have that face to face communication, and you know, really yeah. really showing people what we do or what we can do, um, is one of the big challenges. Um, it's easy to see a picture and say, oh yeah, that looks you know very different. But to be able to actually, you know, be like, hey, this is what it could, this is what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, basically just turn it around and this is what it is now. And so actually being able to see that up and close is definitely a huge challenge right now. Um, because that's that's how we're sold things. You walk into a store, mm -hmm. you know, into a store, you're sold by, you know, seeing things. Mm -hmm. Online, you're like, all right, maybe, you know, look at the colors. But in stores where you actually see things, be able to touch things and that's where you sell. Um, the um, kind of solidifying our position now in our new location, uh, being able to do car shows, that is something that we wanted to continue to do because we were doing that when we were in Durham. Mm -hmm. But now we can't do that because of the restrictions that there are. So that's a, definitely a huge challenge, being able to have people come to the facility and seeing the difference from where we were, which was an 800 square foot building to a 6,000 square foot building where we are now. So it's a huge difference, and being able to you know showcase that is a challenge because we can't because of the restrictions. Um, so just kind of keeping that and keeping people informed um, about the services that we provide um, that actually you know combat the situation or like the virus or anything else that could be that could create an unhealthy environment in your car. Um, that's you know that's a challenge because people people don't know what to believe right now. People are kind of confused. <laughs> yeah. People are like. Is it working? Is it not working? The mask, the no mask. Everybody's kind yeah. of just—it's up in the air right now. So yeah. you know, telling people, "Hey, this is what it is. This is what it does," and they're like, they're kind of skeptical about it. Yeah. You know, and we encourage everyone to do their research. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, at first glance, everyone's like, mm, "Maybe I don't need this. Maybe I don't do that. Maybe." It, but at the, you know, ultimately, trying to keep people informed—that's that's a huge challenge. Absolutely. So, uh, ready to transition to the next part? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would like to mention that um, we haven't put a lot of fuel into this yet, but we do uh, questions, um, and we will answer those live for our guests. So, whether you have some for Sherry last week or Mauricio this week, uh, next week I know we have a contractor coming on that specializes in drywall. 
uh, go ahead and submit those. You can do that with the Anchor app, um, so it's kind of like calling in, or you can send our Facebook page a message and ask questions. And um, if if we're finished this week, you know, I'll be sure to get the answers for you from Mauricio. And uh, if it's an upcoming episode that you have a question, then we'll read those live on the air for you. Cool. Um, I like it. Have a Q and A session. I like it. I, I like uh, AMA. I like the next one. I like that. Yeah. All right. So it's now the time to transition to the three questions we have brewing. This is where we ask the same three questions we ask every guest every week. So uh, I'm going to kick it off with the first one. So when you're not out sanitizing vehicles and making the world a better place by detailing <laughs> them, what do you like to do for fun? Um. So actually, my wife and I just got into um, kayaking. Uh, ah, this is okay. this is this is a whole new thing uh, for us. Um, she is a very huge homebody. She doesn't come out. Sun's <laughs> out. She she works in dermatology, and if the sun's out, she's not. Oh. She's inside. She's running away from it. So, but I've been wanting me, her, and our pup to be able to do a couple of things together. So we started with fishing. We thought that would be cool, mm -hmm. but he doesn't do so well with fishing because he sees me throw some and he wants to go get it. So <laughs> it's too, too close to catch. <laughs> exactly. So it's, it, it didn't work. It didn't pan out. Um, so then we, you know, we can't go bike riding cause then he'll want to eat the tire. Can't do yeah. that. So we, um, we started kayaking about a week ago. Mm -hmm. And so, so far we've gone four times, four wow. or five times. So we went that weekend, we went, we bought two kayaks, went to the lake immediately, tried them mm -hmm. out. Um, I can't remember if we went the second day or if that was on a Sunday, but this week we went Friday for a few hours. We went, every time we go for at least three to four hours. Um, mm -hmm. And so we've been starting on Jordan Lake um, mm -hmm. and there, I got a map and there's little <laughs> legs and stuff that I, at night I'm like, all right, this is the red line where we gotta go. All the, red, all the green lines is where we haven't gone, the red lines are where we have. And so every time we go a different path. Uh, um, and so we went Friday morning, or uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday morning, and then Sunday, and then today, this morning. Uh, so we're starting to get into that a little bit. Uh, but right now, that I would say that's the, our biggest thing. Um, when we're not detailing or anything, we're kayaking now. Nice. So. I like it. <laughs> um, so... Uh, this next question. Was it if the puppy has a life jacket? Is that the next question? Yeah. <laughs> he actually you does. Know, we, we saw those at PetSmart cool. today. He and does. He, he does have cool. a life jacket. It's, yeah. So, he, so I got a buddy. He's a, 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 I don't know what he does. He He's a reservist Captain Blackhawk pilot who flies full-time for American Airlines. Nice. And he's got a boat, of course. Um, and so he's got this little dog. I think it's some kind of terrier. A little and, uh, Yorkie. <laughs> he can surf. Nice. So behind boats now, like they have surfboards you can get. Right. And so he'll put them on there and he's got his little life jacket. That's he'll take awesome. pictures and videos of him. It's that is nice. It's crazy. Yeah, little dog. Awesome. <laughs> <surfing>. <laughs> That's and of awesome. course he's just standing there, but <laughs> <laughs> surfing away and he loves it. I'm like, that is crazy, man. Hashtag That's awesome. life goals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw those life jackets in, in Pet Smart. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Hey, safety awesome. first. Yeah. They right. can swim, but you never know. They get, right, might get man. tired. Yeah. So. Definitely. So Mauricio, uh, what content are you currently consuming? So um, currently, you know, I listen to podcasts. Um, nice. Whether it's about the industry, like um, you know, like the auto detailing podcast, uh, mm -hmm. Rack Company Comp uh, podcast. Um, I also try to diversify what I'm listening to. So um, I listen to a podcast. I've been listening to this podcast for a while now. It's called the Investor Mindset Podcast. Um, and it's it really about real estate um, investing because nice. uh, that's something that we, my wife and I got into a while back before the detailing while I was still in the military. Um, Have you guys uh, found bigger pockets yet as far as real estate investing? N no, I'll not give yet. you that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, really I'll good. Put it, yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> she, she heard that. She, she, she will write it down. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I listen to that kind of thing because it's, it's, it's refreshing and it's awesome to hear different the mindset in different industries mm -hmm. and honestly it, mindset itself can can traverse all the industries period mm -hmm. you know dedication and just thinking ahead will always go for any industry period um, unless you're talking about antiques but even antiques you got to think about how to sell those antiques from the past 
Um, so we uh, listen to that a lot. Um, try to read, you know, books. Uh, when I was little, I, I loved books. Then joined the military, and you know, Marines can't read, so I stopped, <laughs> I stopped reading. If you um, can, when you join, they take that from you. Right, so it's one of those things in boot camp that you're, they're like, "Well, you don't need this. Let's replace it with you know, knowing how to repel from a wall." Yeah. So stuff the opinions like that. in this episode about Marines can't read and are definitely Ryan and Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it's um, uh, I finally got into it. Um, there's a book that I highly recommend everyone to read. It's called. Um, Sorry, having a complete. Um, just make it stick. Make it mm. stick. Make it stick. A it's, one, it's a. It's highly recommended. I don't know if you can put uh, put that in the show notes um, with the authors and everything, but it is basically, it's it highlights the the best ways that us as human beings learn. Hmm. So, it, and it completely takes things that we've been taught, such as. You know, if you want to fi- you, if you want to get the best grades at the end of the at the end of the year, you have to study this section fully, then this section fully, then this section fully. But by the time you get to the end of the year test, you forgot these first three sections, and all you remember is the last two. Mm-hmm. So this book, basically, one of the examples it takes is that kind of example. And what it does is, it shows how we on the best way we learn is really taking a little bit here, taking a little bit here, here, here. Instead of just putting you, all your effort into one thing, it's use, kind of divide it up and learn mm-hmm. everything at the same time. Um, and then as well as, it, I know I hate them and everyone hates them. Everyone hates tests and quizzes. Mm-hmm. But in reality, that's the best way we actually learn. Like the number one way that we do learn is through trial and error. So mm-hmm. testing and mm-hmm. quizzes. And so it, it kind of breaks that down and highlights how it's actually a good thing versus a, you know what yeah. we've been taught where it's you dread that end of the year test because you think you're not going to remember all these things but because you've only been 100 here so, 100 here yeah. right you know you've yeah. been sectioning everything off whether instead of encompass you know gathering everything together and just learning learning it as a whole instead of in sections very cool very, i like it i like it thank you for but, that uh that tip there because absolutely. that book i've never heard of but i will be going out to grab it yeah or absolutely. Grab it on Audible, so. absolutely yeah no it's a, <laughs> it's a great book all about that so uh last question where can people find you all right so people can find us um at www.mcroaddetailing.com uh, first and foremost all the services are on there and even to contact us for any service related questions are on there um you can any joint um event or you know anything that has to do with employment or any type of information period about um, our industry or mentorship in our industry which we do um, you can email me directly at mauricio.melendez at royaldetailing.co um, and you know you, anyone can email me at that and I'll respond within a, an hour or so I'm always on my email it's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> perfect I like it I like it that's definitely so um before we get into the uh, the final segment which is one of my favorites but, the farewell um, the after after Bruce. Oh, okay. I think yeah. it's on the goodbye. Farewell is good too. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, <laughs> Sorry. Real quick. Yeah, Don't yeah, yeah. interrupt you. Um, also, our, ad, our the new address to our location is sixteen oh one Wayne Street in Sanford, North Carolina. So that's the new one. If everyone remembers the old one, scratch that from Scratch, your that, one. <laughs> scratch that one. That is the new address. That's, so, that's okay. important. And you said it was located. Uh, it's near downtown Sanford. Correct. Or, okay. or like right downtown Sanford, like historic Sanford. Okay. So perfect. we're right there. So awesome. we're right off Highway 1. San- so. Sanford is getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. It, it actually is growing very, very quickly. There's very a, big. So do you know where the Walmart is down there? Yes. There's a, a nutrition store down there, and it's veteran-owned, mm-hmm. right, right by the Walmart. Okay. Next time I'm in town, I'll take you over there. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Heck uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so if you guys learned anything tonight, um, whether it's business-related or specific to – Mauricio and uh, detailing cars, then um, I, I simply ask that you just share this episode. Um, send it to your friends, tag people in the comments below. Um, the, the number one thing I love about this show is that we get to have someone on who can shed light on uh, being an entrepreneur and a business owner for people who are either aspiring or currently working on it and uh, they get to provide value to 
their customers and audiences as well. So whether you're someone who just needs to get their car cleaned or you wanna start your own car detailing business, then Mauricio has provided a ton of value here tonight. And this is really all of us coming together and doing that. So um, now I'm, I'm enlisting your help by just clicking that share button. Um, whether you send it through Messenger to one of your friends, tag them below or share it on your timeline, then I'm sure other people will find this valuable as well. What about smashing the like button? Is that still a thing? Um, it is because it's contact free. I think you That's can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Touche, sir. Touche. So Touché. smash the like button. Or maybe gently tap it. Gently depress it. Gently, yeah, I like it. <laughs> gently depress the like button. We'll but, save that for the after brew, right? But yeah, definitely. So now we are moving into that segment. So if you're here on Facebook Live with us, then uh, join us um, when, when we post the recorded version uh, on Mondays at 11 a.m. because uh, the live version doesn't have the after brews. So I get to say goodbye. So. And, and with that being said, Mauricio, thank you again for being here. Uh, Maria, definitely, yeah, he has his wife here for support. She's off camera, but we definitely appreciate you being here recording as well. Uh, good kayak partner. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. uh, thanks again to Nick and Scott for letting us use uh, Trek CBD. We definitely yep. do appreciate it. And uh, with further ado, I'm Gavin Vincent, and this beautiful piece of man candy <laughs> next to me is Ryan Smeltz, and we'll see you guys next time. This episode of Business and Brews was brought to you by our sponsor, Trek CBD in Wake Forest, North Carolina. And as always, hosted by Ryan Smeltz and Devin Vincent. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest this week was Mauricio of MC's Royal Detailing in Sanford, North Carolina. And as always, if you learned anything, please share this episode, subscribe, and tell your friends. Please stay tuned for the Afterburns. Do I get yeah, so we are still recording. I don't know if you saw that. I don't think I explained yeah, it, it, but it's, it's just more relaxed. So if you want to sit down, uh, if you don't, it's whatever. I'm about to say, can I get another one? Of those yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm hogging all the beer over here. I was going to uh, I was gonna say, you got a bottle opener so we can try Hang on, I, I got you. I got you. This is this old army trick. I like it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, last, so, time, so last, I two, last time I did that, the blade broke off of mine. I'm not doing that one no more. Uh, before we get into the jokes, I was going to say, um, Mauricio, uh, Thank you, sir. name brand or Walmart brand uh, crayons? <laughs> crayons? It's a mind joke. Oh, uh, she got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shut up, man. Uh, so there's a... I'm the minority. I, I don't here, know. It's, it's veteran owned. It's veteran owned. I don't know if it's... um. Here's the question. Is there like a directory for veteran owned businesses like in the area? Uh, there is, but there isn't because you have to be like vetted and that process. I mean, not everyone goes I, through it. Yeah. So like not everyone, like we're still in the process of doing that. I was there's, going through it and I got a, a Sam's you. number, but there's no point in maintaining it because that's for getting government contracts. contracts. Mm -hmm. I don't need government contracts. No. So right. pretty much to be veteran owned, it's really as long as you're a veteran, you can just put veteran. No, but I mean, I'm saying, like, if you, own, but if you're a veteran, like, is there yeah. like a directory you the, go to, be like, hey, is there like a filter or something? Yeah, like Yelp or something? there's people. There's people who come up with programs for it, but mm -hmm. nothing in order to take off. Yeah, it's in order to actually get in there. Like, it's kind of like one of those door to soul, door to door people. Mm -hmm. So they have to go, vet, you know, company by company. Like, hey, do you want to be in our program? Hey, do you want to? Right. So and, and not like. Not everybody is in that because not everybody's been reached out yet. Ah, so so, so it's veteran owned. I'm not sure if he's a marine or not, but there's a company in California called okay. Crans Did you want Ready to Eat. Did you like a beer? Oh no, I'm good. Thank uh, you. Okay. Crans Ready to Eat. They're they're chocolate. <laughs> oh nice. And they're crans, and you can eat them. So the last time I talked to him, because 
Uh, I sell on Amazon. I wanted to help them get their products on Amazon, but they were still waiting certain FDA approval and whatnot. Um, but yeah, crayons that you can actually Hop use. Interesting. Yeah, Hop okay. it's pretty good. That's one of them. Uh, so, so do you, do you mind if we hop back to a couple of things? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the, the number one thing I'm curious about because I talked to my brother. Um, Don't you say that, and, puppy? And I'm no. <laughs> So I'm, I'm pretty big on, you know, reading and, and development, and yeah. uh, I like your recommendation of Make It Stick, so I'm pretty excited about that. But um, I, I always think, I think it's John Maxwell that said, uh, train your employees so they can leave, treat them so that they don't they want to. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I was talking about. And I'll give it to you after the show, but yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm curious podcast. because you were talking about uh, people, you know, it, it, it's hard uh, to retain an employee who doesn't have that investment. Mm -hmm. So do you believe that that's something that you can coach? And if you were to do it, how would you go about it? So it's, it's funny because I was actually talking to somebody about this uh, recently. When it comes to determination or at least, in, well, so our, one of our biggest things is obviously that attention to detail. Mm -hmm. When it comes to attention to detail, honestly, I believe you're either born with it or you're not. You're either detail-oriented in something, whether that's academics, sports, mm -hmm. um, even drawing or something, you know, skateboarding, anything, anything from, from a young age. It, there's, there's, always, there, there's always one thing that, you, that, that certain people are or, you know, detail-oriented on. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that just, they don't, they just aren't. They just go with the flow. They, don't, they just do everything as it comes. And they aren't, they don't have that. Um, so I feel like it is something that people have or they don't. Um, and if they don't have it, it's very hard to coach. It's easy to refine if you have it, but it's very difficult to actually teach if you don't, if you just don't, aren't born with it. Um, so when it comes to teaching it, we, w <laughs> there's been several people that come through and we try to teach like, hey, you should, you know, take pride in what you do, but... All, they're so far their entire lives they really just you know they're the kind of people who they don't they just they say they don't care yeah. about everything whether it's what people say about them or how they carry themselves everything mm -hmm. um, and so when it comes to that kind of thing it's it's hard to for them if they really don't care about themselves it's much harder for them to care about the work that you're doing to make right. you know because it at the end of the day we're still in customer service here our job is to satisfy our clients, our customers. But if you don't care to do that, then you know what's the point? Um, so it's yeah. it's very difficult to try to teach somebody that doesn't um, have that mindset to care about putting in 110 percent of their work or you know their pride or dedication to see this end result. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely is a difficult task, just simply because nobody's going to have the same drive and desire to see it succeed like yourself because you have equity in the company they right. don't have equity in the company it's just more or less just say a paycheck for them so you know it's, it's tough to really have somebody care a much, as much about the business as you do I mean but I, you know. I do agree it's challenging I think it's uh, probably right up there below impossible uh, I think it can be coached though huh. and and the method by which, uh, so the company I work for is pretty big in the growth and development mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's right there under impossible. But one of the approaches that we take in order to do that is by providing equity through analogy. And so, of course, they're not gonna care about your company because it's your company. But when you can find where their goals align with yours, align with the company's, mm -hmm. you can use that as right. an analogy. <clears throat> to be like, hey, okay, so yeah. maybe detailing this car and owning this company doesn't apply to you, you know? Mm -hmm. But you wanna go to college and you're young and you said once you graduate college, you wanna start your own business in such and such, this becomes a path by which you go about it. And so taking that long-term goal and breaking it down into midterm and short-term and then literally showing those parallels has has helped us retain a lot of people who otherwise may have given up. Right. Once yeah. again, right under impossible. It, right. <laughs> but it, it is but not one hundred percent effective, but it does help provide perspective. Yeah, and right. I don't think anything works one hundred percent. But I've actually seen that done to where 
you know, you actually go into a workplace where everybody, for the most part, is pulling in the same direction. And it's just amazing how much smoother that feels. I mean, it's like you go into work and everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like effortless because everybody's pulling in that same direction. I mean, it, it can be done, but you're right. It, it takes a lot of work and, you know, it really takes the vision and, and proper management to get there. It really does, but yeah. it can be done. Or you end up in the military and they just, <laughs> you, I say you do. <laughs> Why? Because I told you to. <laughs> That's yeah, That's one of those. <laughs> so it, I was pretty interested when you brought up um, the helping aspect in your long term. Um, do, do you have any specific plans? Like, do you want to start uh, any sort of nonprofit, or do you want to focus on a certain type of veteran? Um, so this is, and I guess that kind of joins into you know our other business, which is like the real estate business and stuff like that. So one of our one of our biggest goals that ties into you know the detailing side is um, we want to be able to build you know um, housing for veterans and stuff like that places where they're not where they can kind of help them a little integrate back into society into society a little bit better get their um, footing a little bit get their footing and stuff you know as one of the benefits for working one of the companies that we have um, you know maybe not specifically the detailing side but you know, one of the businesses that we have, you know, be able to have it as a, a benefit for them, you know, working to be better. Because um, we don't want anyone to stay on the same um, level. Once you're out, you know, you can flash the, the whole veteran thing, but if you're not using it for anything, then what's the whole point of that? You just, at that point, you're just kind of asking for, for handouts. So what you want is, what we want to do is be able to, you know, provide those scholarships for them to go to college if they've already depleted their GI Bill on say like a mechanical school and then they got nothing out of it. You know, be able to, you know, try a different route yeah. um, or a different trade until they finally get, you know, until they get to a place where they want to be. Um, or, you know, even so with the connect- they have to worry about living because yeah. that's the whole part so where, where the real estate comes in. Right. So, because this is something we've talked about. So, the idea is to have somewhere where they don't have to worry about living, so they don't have to be homeless, they don't have to go to shelters, they don't have to, yeah. because a lot of them are struggling with PTSD or other um, just disorders in general, um, trying to get back into society. So, the shelter is in place, and then they will have a job. Yeah. Um, so to help them, you know, little by little, get their footing. Um, if, if it's not something that they like, it's just something to get them by, get some money, save. Mm -hmm. Uh, move to a different place if they want to move to a different place or start a different job, but at least get something in their resume that kind of gives them a little bit more of uh, an opportunity. Um, yeah, and, and you know, being a civilian, I mean, th this has always been a question to me. I mean, I see guys like, you know, Mauricio, and I see, see you as well, Ryan. How did you all make that transition from the military to civilian life? Like, I mean, it seems like some, some veterans struggle with that transition. Like, how, how, do you, how, how do you pull that off successfully? Uh, I don't know if you want to answer first. Uh, I, I'll, I'll let you go because my story is a little bit different. Gotcha. Um, I guess for me, my biggest thing is because um, my biggest thing was in the back of my mind. So first and foremost, I never really thought I was going to leave the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you thought you'd do the twenty? I, I was gonna, I was gonna do something. I, I didn't know if I was gonna be alive enough to make it to the twenty or <laughs> make the twenty period. Um, but I had no plan B. Right. It was military, and that's it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do my job. I'm gonna do whatever it is, and then that's it. That was that was that was it. That was my entire plan. Um, and then when I got out, I was like, okay, contracting for a little bit, make some good money, figure out what I'm gonna do next. Right. Um, and I ended up, you know, doing what I do now, but the way that I transitioned out was, I guess for me, it wasn't as, as normal as other people, because I was more worried and she knows this. Um, I was more worried helping the guy, my guys who had issues, who had PTSD or who were going through so many, you know, family issues because of, you know, the things that they saw or they did in the military. Mm -hmm. I think I was more focused on their needs than what I, than my own, mm -hmm. that I never, then I, I never really 
stop to take care of myself as much. Mm-hmm. And then in helping them, I help myself out a little bit. Um, you know, ha- helping them out with either advice or, you know, um, take. Uh, there's a couple of guys who, you know, they'll come for about a week here or a few days and we'll just go out into the wilderness and go hiking and do, you know, try to get their mind readjusted back into, you know, to integrate back into college life especially mm-hmm. or just back into the workforce. Um, and I was going through some stuff when I came out, but I never actually stopped to take care of that stuff. And so in helping them, I think I helped myself out a little bit enough to where I was, I, I was, you know, I, it was one of those things where you, you fake it till you make it type things. Mm. And so I would just, I kept, I kept going with them. I kept helping and kept helping. And then eventually I was just, I realized that, well, I think I, pre, I, I, I became, or I was able to have a pretty much normal life uh, versus what all these guys were going through, so you know it kind it kind of helped both ways. I think Aries, our, our dog, was also a really yeah. Big so he influence. was yeah. So my pup was actually one of the, <laughs> actually one of the biggest um, besides that you know aspect, but helping them. I think he was actually the biggest anchor that I had mm-hmm. um, because it like at night you know if I would wake up out of nowhere and start, you know, at, from, with a nightmare, he would jump on my chest and he would lick my face. He would, you know, bring me back mm-hmm. um, because we, we didn't live together at the time. She was studying at Chapel Hill and I was living in our house in Jacksonville. And so we were apart, you know, for the entire week up until the weekend. But he was always there kind of helping me out through that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, you know, when I was stressed out, he would, he would sense that and he would come and just, you know, lay his foot, you know, lay on my lap or something. Um, now he lays on my lap and knocks me over, but um, you know, back, back when he was a little tiny pup, he could do that. And now, now I sit on the couch and he looks at me like, "Why are you sitting on my stuff?" <laughs> but you know, the, that was one of the, my my biggest anchors was probably was him was definitely him um, being able to see her on the weekends, um, and because of the fact that I knew I was married, I was like, "Well, I can't." I, I like I, I told myself that I cannot let myself um, deter her from what her path was because um, we've all we we both always had you know that mentality of she's gonna work for what she wants in her life I'm gonna work for what I want in life and along the ways we're gonna continue to merge what our wants but all but never taking away from each other's you know life goals I'm not I don't want to change her life goals and I don't want her to change my life goals. But we can, but both of those life goals can unite at the top. You know, they're they they are compatible. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? And so I kind of, like I said, I uh, I forced my mind into being like, you're 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 fine. You know, whatever it is that you have, it, what, that you need to deal with, deal with it quick, deal with it effectively, so it doesn't come back to haunt you. Um, and that's how I, I guess I was able to transition out of the military a little bit easier. Um, granted, I did go from military to contractor, uh-huh. but like basically the transition from contractor to now, um, you know, dealing with people, detailing, real estate, anything that we do. Well, so. congratulations on all your success, man. I mean, it, it definitely seems like it's been a good journey so far, and it looks like it's only up from here. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Ryan, did you? Oh, I guess you're answering that we want to answer. This is still our first date, so I'm still trying to figure <laughs> out. Um, I'm gonna say I am curious. I mean, every, yeah, I'm every, curious too. Everybody's different, so this is I'm um, of, this is the two questions I've never asked you before, and they've just come up tonight. That's, I mean, huh? they, I thought I knew you. They've been they've been you answered. stuff for me again. Huh? You hiding stuff from me again? Yeah, not yeah, trying okay. to. Not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's behind the beard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. They, they Before he went in the military, he didn't have a beard. I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures. Something's wrong with this camera, man. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm not kidding you. When I'm leaning forward like this, everything is normal. When I lean back, it freezes. Oh, oh it freezes. Oh, now it like doesn't. It. Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully the recording. You're pretty good at dodging awesome. questions. I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so so I got out in 2015 uh, unexpectedly. I was the same way. I was like, oh, I'm gonna retire. You know, I was in for 10 years. Um, and on my ETS date, I took a chapter. So I don't know what they call it in the Marines, but um, basically, like uh, if a female gets pregnant in the military. They give her the option, you can stay in, have the kid take maternity leave, come back to work, or you can take the chapter, which
which is just getting out, so it's a discharge. Uh, oftentimes, the chapter is negative. Um, for those who don't know, there are some different types of discharges, including an uncharacterized, which you get in like basic training. Hey, he was here. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uncharacterized, yeah. you know. Uh, honorable is the most common one. Dishonorable, you probably serve prison time. I got a general under honorable conditions. So okay. the second one. So we, I think we call that OTH, so other than honorable. That's the third one. That's the third one. So they wanted to give me an OTH. Gotcha, okay. Um, but I was in for more than six years, so I qualified for a set board. Gotcha. Before the board, they upgraded it to a general. Ah, uh, gotcha, okay. Uh, turns out, now when I got out, I thought I was screwed. I thought if you didn't get an honorable discharge, that's it. Can't work at McDonald's. I already had a job. Which is what most people actually think. Is it really? It's, that's it's, what they tell it's you. Either, it's either, they tell you and they ingrain in you. You're it's, done. E it's either honorable you or you're done. 18, no, no, no. So it's you, retirement you or you're done. Uh, that. <laughs> if you're a good soldier and you oh, ETS that. because, you know, you're going to go be a lawyer and run your own law firm, you're garbage. Yeah. Really? You They'll, need to retire. Now, now it, it oftentimes, it depends on the chain of command. It depends on... The scenario... If That's the biggest a, one, the chain of command. If you're a garbage <laughs> soldier and you're just ETSing, usually they let you go because they're like, okay, we don't, we don't want you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're a good soldier and you move on to better things after your first contract and you take an honorable discharge, they're like... They will tell you, you will never have a better job than this. You are, you, you're a quitter. You suck. Your, your life is going to be horrible. So... <laughs> I know that. So I thought I was done. I thought that was it. You know, that's what I was told. I already had a job. I was a server at a restaurant. So I was like, I'm going to keep this for as long as I can. Um, so I got out. So, I mean, just, just sorry, I wonder how much of that plays into, like, the transition part that some people oh, huge. struggle with. That's a lot. Because, like I said, there's seven different types of discharges. I only knew about two. Even while I was in. <laughs> now I knew about three. <laughs> wow. You're honorable and you're dishonorable. So I thought I was done. So I kept my job, you know, and after getting the paperwork, I was told on my ETS date that I was getting it. So I'm walking out of that office like, no, I was emotional. I was like, like, what am I going to do? So, hmm. so I go to work. So I worked my job. I kept it as long as possible. I'm a server at a restaurant, man. I didn't know I still had my GI Bill. I didn't know what my options were. I was in Texas, my entire family and everybody else is up here in North Carolina. So I got fired from that eventually. And I, I thought that was it. So my brother, my little sister was about to graduate high school. She's 10 years younger than me. So I talked to my brother on the phone. He's like, look, you're coming back up here anyway to visit. Move back up here come work with me at this other company he was working at. So it's like, all right. So I did that, and then I jumped, job, job. I quit, I got fired, I quit, I got fired, I quit, I got fired. And uh, after doing all that, I met some great people, I did some great things, and that's when I heard the Gary Vaynerchuk video, scan stuff, sell it online, and I was like, yeah, I'm probably just gonna do that. <laughs> but now, I do sales, I love sales. I've, I've actually started a company 17 times and screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I'm at more failures than successes right now. Um, but I'm what I like to refer to as a doer. So I will learn by doing. Yeah. Um, I'm like Gary Vaynerchuk says, I want to be 103 out of 115, yeah. not three out of three. You know, so um, I do have a full-time job now. It's sales. I love it. I love sales. I like talking to people. I run an online business. I actually have a wholesale account with Grub Style. Okay. So I sell their shirts online. Nice. And I help a uh, nonprofit in Apex uh, sell their products online. Very nice. Um, so it's fun. I work with, right now I have two virtual assistants. Uh, a little challenging. One of them keeps yeah. disappearing on me. But, uh, <laughs> but we're getting there. Oh, they're uh, on the internet. <laughs> I don't have internet especially when, they, especially <laughs> when they're the, your accountants. Yeah. You know, oh, my and God. And they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, it, I think it's different for everyone. Um, I still feel like I have some of the struggles that you mentioned 
Um, I think everybody does. Uh, thankfully, with this whole thing going on, the VA has moved to a more virtual platform. They're much more accessible. Nice. Um, I went through a VR&E, so I had to go to, a, it was vocational rehabilitation and something, I don't remember. But um, basically you get more GI Bill, I'm not sure how much more, maybe like a year or something. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't get to tap into all the benefits, but there's that. There's so much out there, man. Mm -hmm. I met a ton of people, met this one guy wanting to help me with my rating and stuff like that. Yeah. So. So it's awesome. And so recently, because of all of that and all of this mm -hmm. and everything we go through as veterans, I was talking to one online, this whole Vanessa Guillen stuff down at Fort Hood. Huh. Um, and you were at Fort Hood, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Well, back in the 90s, um, they just recently, in the past couple of years, uh, busted another large group. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just leave it at that. And back in the 90s, they did the same thing. And then I was there when uh, Major Hassan was on trial. Mm -hmm. I was an MP, so me and my friends were responsible for protecting right. him. Um, and then uh, I was there on February 2nd of 2014 when uh, Lopez uh, went crazy because somebody didn't sign his leave for him. Right. I actually know the girl that was standing in front of him when Jesus. it all came to an end. But um, <laughs> anyways... Pretty proud of myself just now for the selection of words I use there. Yeah. <laughs> try, try to keep it appropriate. But any, anyways, um, so we were fed up, and I, I was telling her because people are trying to make this about one thing or about another thing, and so we are currently on the very, very, very front end of starting a nonprofit, specifically uh, targeting help for uh, military service members and veterans involved in sexual assault and harassment. That's amazing. Uh, hopefully, I, I got to talk to my partner. We need three to make a board. We don't have the third person yet, so that's why I say like very front end. But um, one of my goals with this whole project is to get people in front of Congress, get people in front of the people who can positively affect that change. Uh -huh. um, un unfortunately, we already lost one, but hopefully to see a major shift. You know just as much as I do that the military <laughs> stops sexual assault with PowerPoint. Yeah. And it's I, not working. Yeah, it's a 14-hour 14 14 hour, uh, briefing. But when it does happen, it's kind of... Yeah. Wrong, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's amazing. That's, that's, that's awesome. 